You ready for this? Yeah, I'm going to take Shahada again. I don't think you're going to take Shahada after this one. <laughs> okay. So here we go. Acts 17 Apologetics. Why does God even need son? It's like doing sex with my googly eye creation and having a baby with genetics of human and plastic. I don't think that's God's description. Now, Sam, you want to look at this and say, how, how, can, how can Christians explain Christian theology to you to make it clear that we're not talking about God having sex and producing an offspring that has nothing to do with this here. Yeah. The, the, the relationship between the father and son is an eternal relationship. It's from all Spiritual. eternity, right? Just like, just like Muslims believe that Allah's speech is eternal. So there's Allah and simultaneously his speech is co-eternal with him, right? So you have two, yeah. you have these two eternals right here. Well, the, the relationship between Allah and his speech is an eternal relationship according to Orthodox Islam. Well, the relationship between Father, Son, and Spirit is an eternal relationship. Why, in the name of common sense, do you think we're talking about having sex and producing an offspring? Do you know why? It's because your God and your prophet were so dumb that they didn't know what we were talking exactly. about. And they say these kinds of things. What? How can God have, how can God have a son when he has no wife? Durr. Right? Now think about this. Think of, that's the Quran, ladies and gentlemen. Now think about this, right? Because because we've covered this before. The Father affirms Jesus as the divine Son. The Holy Spirit affirms Jesus as the Son. Jesus affirms himself as the Son. The angel Gabriel affirms Jesus as the Son. John the Baptist, the prophet, affirms Jesus as the Son. His apostles affirm him as the son. Men affirm him as the son. Women affirm him as the son. Jews affirm him as the son. Gentiles affirm him as the son. Even the demons affirm him as the son. Centuries later, an illiterate seventh century caravan robber comes along and says, what? He's a son? That doesn't make any sense. God didn't have a wife. Durr. <laughs> If if, oh, Mah yeah. if Muhammad had had an ounce of common sense, it should have he should have said, "Wait a minute, let me figure out what these people are talking about." And they would have said, "We're not talking about God having sex and producing an offspring, you giant giant moron." Yeah. But but with Muhammad, nope, that's the only thing a father can be. And Sam, by the way, for for Muhammad to think, for Muhammad and Allah to think that if you're talking about a father son relationship, the only thing this could possibly be referring to is sexual reproduction, as our Muslim friend just said here. Can you think of a problem that they've got in the Quran if that's the oh, only no. if that's the only way to understand this language? Now we're gonna have fun because Allah got a girlfriend. Does he? He's got his his thing going on. You know what I'm saying? He does. Nobody, oh yeah, <laughs> folks. Guess what? Chapter 43, verses 3 and 4 of the Quran. It says the Quran has a mommy. It says this is an Arabic Quran. It is in the mother of the book. Guys, the word is Umul Kitab. Mother of the book that is with us. The mother of the book that is with us. And then if you go to chapter 13, 39, it says Allah can blot out anything in the mother of the book that is with him, with us. Oh, Quran has a mommy. Mommy. And the mommy belongs to Allah. It's with Allah. But the Quran is supposed to be the word of Allah. That means the Quran's daddy is Allah. And its mommy is Allah's wife. So Allah's getting his thing on with the mommy to produce the Quran. Allahu Akbar, David. Yeah. Now, now, now guys, do you understand what, what we're talking about here? The Quran refers, it, it's not always in the translation. Sometimes it'll say the source of the book or something like that. But in Arabic, it says mother of the book. So there's Allah, there's his, there's the Quran, and there's the mother, the mother of the book. Now, every Muslim will want to say, it's not talking about a, a, Allah having sex with the mother and producing the Quran as an offspring. I would agree. But your God and your prophet are the ones who, like you here, say and insist that if you're saying that there's, there's father and son from all eternity, you must be talking about sex. You're the one saying that if you're talking about this father-son relationship, this parent and offspring relationship, that it can only be a biological sense and not some not some other sense of father and son. You're the one saying that. Well, if you're the one saying that, and then you talk about the mother of the book, and the mother's with Allah, and you've got Allah, the mother, and then the Quran, 
The offspring, well, great. Then you're talking about your God having sex with a book and producing the Quran as an offspring, right? You can't get around it because the only way you can get around it is to say, okay, we're not talking about, we're not talking about that. Okay, great. Then you would have to say that your God is wrong for insisting that that's the only thing we could mean. There's no way out of it. There's no way out of it. Thank you once again. <laughs> I keep saying someone it. Someone said to you, someone said to you, surprise, David. Surprise, surprise.